Hey guys, Lewis here with PremiumBeat.com and today we're going to be exploring a brand new tool that was recently included in the DaVinci Resolve 17 beta. Prior to DaVinci Resolve even being a competitor to Premiere Pro with its editing capabilities, it was and well still is a world-class color grading software with excellent tracking and masking capabilities. However, with the recent release of the 17 beta, they've included a brand new tool called Magic Mask, which makes masking and tracking that a little bit more efficient. And it's a very useful tool for isolating specific areas of the human body. Now, it's a very easy tool to use. Uh, but today we're going to run over the basics to get you up and running. Over the last year, we've seen several new features added to Resolve that takes advantage of the Neural Engine. And another new feature that uses the Neural Engine has just been added with the Resolve 17 Beta, the Magic Mask. This is a tool that allows you to isolate one or more people within your composition by applying nothing more than a paint stroke to the person. So no qualification, no masks, just a single paint stroke. With the magic mask, we can generate a mask for the entire person or switch the operation to focus on a specific feature. This could be from the arms of a person to their shoes. And yes, this does suggest that the magic mask is to be used on humans only. So a slight difference already between using say the HSL qualifier to isolate the color of a car. So let's have a look at how you would use this tool. On the color page, you're gonna find a new icon titled magic mask. When you click that, you'll see this new panel and it's divided into three areas, the toolbar, the stroke list, and the mask finesse panel. Ultimately, I would say there's nothing wholly different about this area as it's remarkably similar to other elements within Resolve. The mask finesse panel, for example, has near enough all of the same settings you'll have for the HSL qualifications and power windows. So there's not really any additional learning needed to some extent. To apply a magic mask to a person, you simply add a stroke to the person that you want to mask. Now, you might think it would be beneficial to apply a really long stroke so the software is registering more of that person, right? Well, as noted in the reference manual, very long paint strokes aren't actually that useful and can be counterproductive later on when you're trying to track uh, the mask. This is particularly true if the stroke needs to follow something that changes shape as it moves, perhaps as a person moving further into the composition, or they're moving in and out behind obstacles. While you can add as many strokes as you like, fewer strokes actually work better. So with the stroke added, I recommend turning on this mask overlay to see where you stand with the mask. In general, I think it's pretty much gonna do a solid job from the base stroke. However, if needed, we can have the finesse tool to refine your mask. And as I previously stated, a lot of these tools are found elsewhere in Resolve. So I won't repeat basic information on these settings, but if you are entirely new to Resolve and just happen to find yourself watching this video, I will say for the most part, you're only gonna to want to be dealing with the denoise, the clean black and white, the blur radius, and of course the radius of the mask itself, which can be controlled by the radius slider. And to change how the radius is controlled, yeah, is done through this drop box. And here we can choose whether to decrease or expand the mask. Finally, we need to apply the tracking because the subject and the camera are moving. And just like the power windows, it's the same method by just simply hitting play and Resolve will track the movement. Once the tracking is applied, we can make one final pass over the mask to see if we need to refine the selection, and then we can make our grade adjustment. For the likes of using the mask to mask out an entire person, I find it's been quite useful for a general offset adjustment to either bring the subject out of the scene or perhaps to give them an overall creative color cast. Now you might find that perhaps there's an area being masked and you don't need it to be. In that case, you can also paint a subtractive stroke. These are colored red over the parts of the image that are not the person or the feature that you want uh, isolated. But remember, when you do this, you will need to track again. Additionally, if you feel like it's not correctly picking up, uh, say an arm when the character moves throughout the scene, you can add a stroke. But again, I suggest not doing too many because it's only gonna slow your system down and will likely confuse the software. And I would suggest maybe only using around about four strokes uh, per node if needed. As mentioned at the start, we can also add feature strokes, and these are great for more refined mask choices, which is particularly useful for skin tone adjustments and more specified corrections to individual body parts. To do this, we simply swap over to the Features tab and then select the appropriate feature. In our case, for this clip, we're going to select Face, and then add another feature for exposed arms. Every time you add a new feature, it adds a layer in the Magic Mask panel, and these can be turned off or outright deleted. Like the person mask, it follows the same principles. Use the finesse tools to refine the mask selection. Use the subtractive strokes if the mask highlights an area that you don't necessarily need and then track forward. 
Now in this particular shot, because we have two people with similar skin tone values, uh, without the magic mask, we would typically have to pull a skin tone qualification, then create a power window around the woman so we can isolate her and not the man. Of course, the qualification isn't just one step, so that may be a few minutes of work, then the power window itself is an additional step. So the magic mask quashes that into a simple procedure. And the magic mask is great to analyze and correctly isolate human features against backgrounds that have similar elements to the person, whether that's the clothing or the skin. However, this doesn't mean that this is the tool to replace the qualifier and uh, power windows. The magic mask doesn't really have a soft translucent mask edge. And depending on the complexity of the movement of the shot, it's not gonna be as precise enough to replicate that of intensive rotoscoping. But for these adjustments, yeah, it's a fantastic inclusion to an already great software. But I did note that the computer was struggling when playing back uh, files that had been graded with the magic mask. And I think it's because uh, it's using the neural engine opposed to just a qualification or power window, which isn't as extensive and heavy on uh, the GPU. Uh, but yeah, I was getting 10 to 15 frames per second, but of course this is the beta. So perhaps we'll see some performance enhancements with the full release. But anyway, my name is Bean Lewis with Premium Beat and I'll catch you guys next time.